All right, so welcome to American Truck Simulator. We're just gonna run a job or two, and there goes my drink. So we're just gonna run a job or two, and that'll pretty much wrap up the stream. Um, I have an experience mod, but I believe that's really the only mod. Oh, and I guess I have a mod for smoke out of the smokestacks. So I guess that's not going to be too bad. Time to hit the road. No, nobody's coming. So we're going to go ahead and go. And hopefully not get caught up on that edge. There we go. Alright, so this job apparently is seven hours long, so that's not going to be too bad. So hopefully this went a lot better compared to my previous one. I mean, I'm sure it did, so that won't be a very big deal. I just want them on slow. It's not really raining bad enough to warrant. Whoop. And hopefully there's nobody behind me. There isn't. So that works out. So we'll make this turn just like that, It'll be nice and wide, won't be a very big deal at all. Oh, I did not check to make sure that nobody was coming, so kind of in my bad. Okay, so apparently I am exceeding the speed limit, and we're going to go over here, because I intend to continue to exceed the speed limit. I don't intend for this video to be very long, because I know that not everybody may want to sit here and watch this forever. So we're just going to go ahead and just drop this stuff off, and move on to our next mission really quick. This mission was, I believe, originally 12 or 13 hours long, but... Obviously, you know, with speeding, it's going to be a little, a little quicker. Not slower, it's going to be quicker. We'll set that at 72. I'd also like to add a disclaimer that it's not healthy for smoking of any kind, please do not pop it. Oh, and I'm texting and driving, that's not safe either. Don't do that either. respond to my wife. Hello, did 
did you read your messages? Okay. How are you feeling? Feeling better? Feeling better. It's okay to be with the pregnancy. Okay. Does that shower help? A little bit, yeah. Just a little bit. The warmth, the pieces that I wish that I could have. The pink ones in that part. Okay. Or the dark and the warm and the shampoo for this monster. And it's gentle on the skin. Okay, well, I believe we could make that happen. That wouldn't be an issue. We need the baby shampoo anyway. Well, it helps with the hide. Right. Rocky is very concerned about you. He's a dog that really cares about you a lot. Archer. Archer was concerned, but he got distracted by a little bit of rawhide, so I had to take the rawhide away from him. Because it wasn't very big, you know, it was probably bottle cap size, about this big or so. I just didn't want him choking on it or... Yeah, you would have choked on it. Go straight. But, you know, since Rocky's so much larger than he is, Rocky chewed down the bone quite a bit, so... He's very proud of himself. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Careful. I forgot to say that. Those were not transported around very uh, calmly. You mean like the one that I had explode in the car? Oh, I don't think I told you that story. Right after I bought that uh, that Dodge, the one that burned down on me, uh -huh. um, I bought a bunch of sodas, and I used to keep my sodas in the back of the car. So when I was at work, you know, I could just go out to the car, or while I was out running things, I could just grab a drink, you know, without spending extra money that I really didn't need to spend. Well, at this particular point, I had a <clears throat> couple packs of the Cherry Dr. Pepper bottles, the six packs, and the trunk along with some of uh, those monsters, the coffees, because I found this place where I could buy the monster coffees and bulk, you know, where I could, it was a gas station, um, it was out by the Buffalo Park there. The part where we like to take Rocky. Oh, Pioneer's Park. Yeah. There's that gas station out there by Pioneer's Park. They would sell them to me Go by the case. And so I'd have a bunch of that and then I'd have anywhere between 40 and 60 bottles of Dr. Pepper and Mountain Dew and stuff like that floating around in the back. And one morning on my way to work, I pulled out a Dr. Pepper and I made it basically to work. So before I went inside, I grabbed myself a bottle and I sat down in my car again because I had about 10 minutes before I had to clock in. And so I was sitting there and I opened up this bottle of Cherry Dr. Pepper and it immediately just, the whole bottle exploded all over me and I had to work my entire shift like that, just covered in soda. I would have been upset. I was very mad. Because, uh, you know, and it was the hottest summer day possible. Oh, that would have been miserable. It, it was awful. And then, if you stop and you think about it, I don't like to run my AC in the cars. So I'd have my windows down because if I ran the AC, Stay I'd be right. too cold because I was right. wet and sticky from the Dr. Pepper exploding. And so, basically, right. as I was having the windows rolled down, you know, running around transporting things right. for work, you know, I was getting, the soda was getting reheated on me and Get ready 
you know, not like extreme temperatures, but it was making it sticky all over again, and it was just a miserable experience. And that was one of my longer shifts where I was there from, I think it was like 8 or 9 a.m. clear until, oh, I don't remember what time. I think it was probably 6 or 7 at night. That's because we were understaffed. So I was running around doing errands and stuff like that, delivering items and stuff like that to the customers. And here I am, you know, all sticky from Cherry Dr. Pepper. And so, you know, like in Crossfire and some of my other cars that have nicer, more comfortable seats like that, that's why I had that rule about, you know, no food, no drink. Because of that one bottle exploding. And yeah, it's probably a bit of a harsh reaction, you know, but... If you've never tried to clean sticky items off of leather seats, it's not fun. It takes time, especially the longer it sits. And it just, it makes the whole experience just awful. Like, I would not recommend it to anybody. And, you know, like the carpets and, like, the truck and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Those are even worse to get that stuff out of. At that point, you might as well just throw your whole floor mat away. I'd be like, um... What's his face? What's his face from the Detail Geek YouTube page? Mitch? I'd be like him, kind of, only I wouldn't try to save the mad. That mad's going in the trash. I'm sorry. It's cheaper just to replace the mat based on the amount of time you'd spend trying to clean it, you know. Especially if you don't have all the tools to clean it. This would explain why you got so upset when I. I the mountain dew on the I mean, it wasn't granted, part of it wasn't my fault because I got out on an ice bank. Well, yeah, see, I understand, like, accidents happen, but, like, that one time where you bumped into the soda in the cup holder and it just kind of spilled all over the car, that kind of made me upset because, you know, at that point, I don't have all the tools to get all that out, and so, remember the car smelled like, I think it was Mountain Dew is what was spilled, so, Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper, okay, so the car smelled like Dr. Pepper, how would you know, you weren't there, Rocky, you're a good boy, though, but the whole car smelled like Dr. Pepper for, what, two or three months, before it finally started to dissipate, and even then, the smell still lingered forever. Mm. At one point, because of that spill, we actually started to get ants in the car. I didn't know that. For viewers that don't know, though, you should explain it's a tiny little car. Like a little two-seater. Oh, no, not... It was in the van we had that that happened, remember? Oh. There was a ban on sodas in the tiny little car, in the little two-seater we had, the Crossfire. Yeah, there was a ban in that car for a reason. It was a really, it's a really nice car and I want to keep it nice. I like to keep my thing, my, especially like the nicer cars like that one. I really like to keep them as clean as possible and as nice looking as possible. And you know, especially like, well, like with the van we had, you know, it was at almost 200,000 miles and the previous people, they didn't keep up with it. So it wasn't doing well. But if you'll notice, the Crossfire was doing well. And that's, you know, literally because I took care of it. And, I, you know, like, especially out there at gas stations when people would give me, 
and give me compliments on the car, my response was always, well, you know, if you take care of things, they'll last. Yeah. And especially cars, you know, as they get up to 100,000, like, the crossfire, they start to break down a lot as far as, like, looks and aesthetics. But the crossfire always looked brand new because I always took care of it. Well, even, you know, even, even Dad took care of it before it became mine, too, so that really helped. Mm. Arthur, how do you have input on the car, buddy? He says, I like car rides. Does that count? He does <laughs> like car rides. Both the boys do. I think the reason Rocky likes car rides is because there's usually food involved. You do have a point. It was either food or he was going to the P-A-R-K. I don't want to say what the place was because he, he knows. Directly to me. He knows how to spell. Oh, I know he knows how he, to spell. He knows what that word is. Yeah, I kind of figured. We'll get there, buddy. Mm. And now it's just too, too cold. cold. Well, with it, with it sitting around 13 and 24 degrees Fahrenheit, that's kind of a little chilly. Well, more chilly for me. Not so much chilly for him because he likes to roll around in the snow. It depends on the wind factor for him. Yeah. Well, like, you know, today there's no snow, but he didn't really want to sit outside because I think it was, what... The real field was right around 15 or so, I think it was, and the wind was coming up into the backyard and going across him rather than... he doesn't like it when it's foggy either. I've noticed. No, he really doesn't. But it wasn't really foggy, it was more that the wind was going side to side on him. Don't so stop it. But the wind was going side to side on him rather than, you know, across his back like he likes. So I really think that the wind direction does play a big factor on the whether he wants to stay outside and play or whether he's just kind of, whatever, bring me back inside, I'm done. I don't want to be out here no more. a tight squeeze. I don't remember how long my trailer is, but I downgraded it from, it had previously been something like 94 feet or something like that, and I downgraded it and I think it's still at like 70 feet, somewhere in that neighborhood, so it's really large, and a lot of these turns are a bit of a challenge because the trailer is longer. It's a big part of why I don't like large trailers, kind of. Alright, so we're just going to place this trailer and call it good and start the next one. Is right next to Rocky, and Rocky's like, uh, you're in my body, dude. <laughs> that was kind of funny. <laughs> Looked at him like, no, dude, you're in my bubble. <laughs> yeah, Rocky's very big on personal space. It's kind of weird because most dogs are not about personal space. He is if he's grooming 
don't really help if I'm hitting the right time. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I understand. I don't know what it is, though. Right. figured that out. Just, like I said, take it over there, push the button twice, and then if you want you can just put it back down on the Xbox and, or the cable over there and I'll put it back up. Should be a rest area right up here. Shouldn't be very far, a couple of miles maybe. But we'll set the cruise at 65. What, downtown? Uh-huh. Over by the courthouse downtown. Oh, wow. You think they'd notice barriers? No. No. The job happened to be a distress, no danger, it's safety and driving connection. I was lucky to see the driver of the vehicle that smashed through the barriers. Wow. Kind of, that's kind of like the guy that rear-ended mom. Mm -hmm. Drunker than a skunk out driving around, trying to get home. Too drunk to realize he too, was too far over and hit her. Yeah. 
Wait, they, the guy hit that barrier while he was drunk so hard it ripped it out of the crown, out of the ground? It ripped the barrier straight out of the ground. And it was up in the yard? Of what? Yeah, it was up in like the yard and right by the... Of the courthouse or across the street? I'm not sure. Well, if it's across the street, that's a lot of force. He had to have been going at least 50 or 60. Mm. And if it's over there in the courthouse, he was... Probably going again a considerable speed, but not quite as fast. Across the street from the courthouse. Across the street? Yeah, it was down by the courthouse and like ended up across the street. Over at that law firm or the gas station? You know where like the gas Abe state? Lincoln statue is? That's where he ended up. It was like right behind that gas station, yeah. That's like two blocks over. Yeah. He flew a good distance, because look. There's the map. What happened over there? Wow. Yeah. That guy flew. That's like that's actually honestly three blocks. Yeah. Uh, I, I adjust my speed estimation. I'd say he's probably going... Coming from that angle, he was probably coming off of, um... Oh, what is that? He's probably coming off of 11. Although... If, <laughs> although, if, if I'm reading that right, he was headed, uh, east, which means he'd be coming from... Um, oh, what is that? Highway 2? Yeah. Yeah, he'd be coming off of, uh, Highway 2 and South Street. Up over the bridge, probably. Well, over oh, the bridge. that's dangerous. Well, if he was coming up over the bridge, he, that means he'd be coming up out of Rosa Parks Way. Which means he turned down the wrong way, and not only did he turn down the wrong way... But that's what it's sounding like. Yeah. Well, the speed limit on the bridge is only 45. I think it... because it's sounding like he turned from the description... And he, the... Went, he turned right instead of going left or straight, so he turned up the one way. So he had to have been coming off the bridge speeding, because that speed limit drops from... 60 to 50 and then 40 and then 25 so by the time you hit the bottom of the bridge at the end of that five mile stretch you should only be going about 25 unless you're speeding and well from the article description that's kind of what it sounds like is like he came and then made a wrong turn like the wrong turn while drunk and then went up that way too probably maybe into oncoming traffic because the courthouse traffic really doesn't stop. No, and it goes um, left. Yeah. It only goes left. It doesn't go left to right or anything. It's a one way. <laughs> courthouse traffic over there on 12th Street heads uh, to the left, to the heart of downtown, and then out onto the highway again. Or down by the arena. Yeah. So if he instead of going one way, the one way, you know, up or left, if he went right and he came off that bridge at full speed or faster, then turned into oncoming traffic and swerved and hit the barrier to avoid it, that would make sense why it was two or three wow. blocks away. That's crazy. That's a long way to go. That's, yeah. That's, well, from the looks of it, he landed up there by Centennial Mall, uh, north. And if he was going the correct way at the correct speed and he hit that, he would have ended up, whoa, turn that down. Sorry about that. He would have been, if he was going the right way, he would have been, he would have landed in Centennial Mall south. I didn't know my own way that way. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, our suspicion was right. There ain't no way he came. That was a wrong turn. So there's no way he came off south there's in Highway no 2? No way. So he had to come off uh, Rosa Parks way. And then he realized he messed up. By turning down the one way on 12. And then, no, but he drove, he managed to still drive off. What? I don't know how, but Hi, Rocky. The, the video. He, he still drove off. He still drove off. His car should be total. At the least bit, his engine should be Because he ran into off. two different barriers. And ripped them both up? And, and ripped them both up. Front car, front of the car smashed in, like accordion style smashed in, and he was still driving off. Wow. No, sir. No, I love you. Jesus. But you're not gonna butter me up for extra treats. You got all the steak treats and the begging strips you're gonna get for the day, okay? Can we use those will upset your stomach? Nebraska people continue to surprise and amaze me for stuff that happens here. Just when you think you've heard it all. Yeah. Here comes somebody else with something more ridiculous. Hi, how can I assist you? You can stop buttering me up for more treats, man. You're not going to get them. No, you're not going to get your treats. Please stop. Thank you. Oh, boy. So this time around, I took a bit of a shorter delivery because mm -hmm. my previous mission had been like a 12 or 13 hour drive Right. and I just didn't want to be driving this semi, even though it's a game, I didn't want to be driving this semi for like 13 hours, even though I really speed really bad in this game. Like I'll go 80 and 90. There was one mission I went a hundred and something, hundred and two, hundred and three. So, you know, it makes the missions go quicker, but I really kind of just want to keep the video more short and sweet. Because I've noticed my hour long videos, they tend to not get as many views. And, you know, the objective is to capture people's attention and to get them to continue to watch the videos but not have the videos be so long that nobody wants to watch them either. Rocky, do you want to go back to bed? Yeah. He just likes to lay up in the bed. Go on. You can go. You can go to bed. That's no, fine. Okay. Rock, you can go to bed. That's fine. Okay. Turn right. Archer, were you not ready for bed? There we go. And there 
here we go. We'll save our game. We don't want to lose any progress. And there we go. That's a wreck. 